are the people who march to City Hall to protect our neighborhoods and save them. We, we, stand up to the mayor and say this is not okay. This is our fucking city and we're not going anywhere. Thank you for supporting. This is just the beginning. This shit's gonna get wild. Thank you. My name is Stuart Shuffman, AKA Broke Ass Stuart. I'm a travel writer, a poet, a TV host, and a motherfucking hustler. And now I am running for mayor of San Francisco. I'm running for mayor because I really care about San Francisco and it's like really been um, heartbreaking to see what's happening in the city. I moved in the mission in 2004 originally and there was like lots of artists. It was a Latino neighborhood. There was a lot of like, you know, this feeling of like something interesting and it was happening culturally. There's 98 year old grandmothers getting served with eviction notices. There's like, you know, artists being pushed out of their homes. There's people who, who three generations of family that grew, grew up in a home and then they're getting fleeced and turned out for some young prick who makes too much money for, for his age. You know, we all have to make money, but it's all about like, you know, how you treat the world around you in response to that. Edley wants to turn this city into an incubator for the rich and powerful. He's trying to kick out all the low income people. And I have two reasons why I'm majorly against that. The first one is that I have a heart. And the second one is because low-income people are the only people who read my website. <laughs> Rich-ass people do not read broke-ass Stuart. Is this an experiment, or are you really trying to raise awareness around the serious issues that are not only happening in this city, but nationally? Yes. <laughs> I'm looking at this whole thing as a very serious circus. I use humor for everything. That's just kind of how I grew up. It used to be that getting a lift was something you did with hippies in Golden Gate Park. And that wearable technology was something that you bought at Good Vibrations. And that a live stream, that a live stream was something that you paid someone in the Castro to do to you. It's a protest campaign and using the spotlight and my voice to bring to light issues that aren't being talked about necessarily that Ed Lee's not gonna touch on because he doesn't seem to care. Ed Lee used to be a pretty radical dude. He was a radical housing rights activist. He organized rent strikes in Chinatown. He was part of the blockading and the uh, striking of the International Hotel. But um, now he's the person that he used to fight against. He is the person who is allowing these things to happen and giving carte blanche to these huge companies, the developers and the tech businesses, giving the tech businesses tax breaks and giving the developers like the access to whatever they fucking want. At least with Willie Brown, Willie Brown was old school, and at least he did his deals in the back room, and at least he was like, all right, you can have your building, but you gotta give something to the poor people. We're at the point where our city leaders have you know, just thrown us to the wind, and now it's back to our civic leaders, our, our, our church leaders, and our community organizers who are really fighting for the people of San Francisco. Why does it really matter that this city has been hijacked by the wealthy? There's a statistic recently that said that that San Francisco had equal or greater income disparity than Rwanda. I'm very pink, you know, I'm into redistributing the wealth a bit. I'm not talking about like USSR shit. I'm talking about democratic socialism like they have in parts of Europe, like in Northern Europe, where it's like, you know, you may not make $5 million a year, but you will never have to worry about starving. You, and your education will be paid for and your housing will be paid for if need be. You know, there, we have too many, this city alone is there's 10,000 homeless people. That's ridiculous. There's probably 10,000 millionaires too. But you know what the problem is? I'm sick of poor people. I'm fucking tired of poor people. You wanna know why? We, there shouldn't be poor people in this country. So let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of every single fucking poor person and make them not poor. So, I mean, yeah, I'm pink as fuck. But, I, you know, this is what I believe. So what is your vision for the city? My vision for San Francisco sees a lot more affordable housing. It sees streets with no human poop on it. It sees centers where people who, who are mentally ill and have drug problems can, see, can get the help that they need and keep them off the street. A city where the arts continue to thrive and we have a, a world-class nightlife that isn't getting shut down all the time. And it, it sees a city where the rich don't just get to have whatever they want. And it's people power. Have you ever held any political office? Yeah, I was the vice president of my high school. <laughs> well, that actually takes more political savvy to do anything in high school than I think in actual government. I was a reject in high school. Like it would have taken a lot just to be voted biggest loser. <laughs> just because someone has political experience, that should probably preclude them from being in politics, honestly. Because look, look what that's done to our, our country so far. Look at our system. Everybody's bought and sold before they even step in. Can you really work the system from outside the system? What happens if 
you're like the Jimmy Carter. Oh, forget it. You weren't even born then. <laughs> a lot of our politics here have been shaped by outsiders, um, historically. Places don't become progressive because the establishment lets them. You know, it takes fighting. It takes outsiders. It, it takes people be being sick of the good old boy system. A good leader doesn't always just lead. They also, you know, talk to people who are smarter than them and who know more about the subject than they do. I'm surrounded by very smart people, very talented people who, who believe in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, um, and I've been here for a long time. I know I've got more, I'm better connected here than anybody I know of. I can walk into a place, I know the busboy and the owner and the guy who invested in the place. So it puts me in a unique position to actually know what San Franciscans care about and not just worry about what rich people want. Are you trying to win this election? Do I expect to win? Psh. I'm just doing this for the cocaine and hookers, man. <laughs> Mary and Barry knows what I'm talking about. I mean, I got into this knowing that it's not very likely that I'm gonna win. Uh, that's not the whole point. I mean, if I win, yeah, fuck yeah, let's make some changes. Let's, let's, let's really fix the city as much as we can. But um, more so, I'm doing this to force the conversation, bring up the issues that need to be brought up. But I'm also doing it because you guys, these guys, us guys, and, and gals, broke asses, artists, working class people, we need a voice. Why should people vote for you? You should vote for me because I care about the city and because I have plans to make it better. Inclusivity, community, diversity, social responsibility, those are all the core of what San Francisco is. The world needs a San Francisco. The world needs a place where, where no matter what you do or who you are or, or who you love, you have a safe place to go to. That where you're embraced and you are told you're okay.